Uh, right, welcome everyone. Um, so I'm just going to run through a bit about Rottle and at the end feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, I bought Rottle about 15 years ago. I used to live in the south. I've always wanted to live in Scotland. I got here and embarked on an adventure with uh, lots of projects to do, lots of buildings to restore and, and so on. Not many trees on the place. Um, and so I'll talk you a bit through that anyway. So. Uh, so, just a bit about Rottle. Um, it's a mixed upland estate, about 8,000 acres, just to set the scene. We have 750 blackface ewes. When I got here, we had a tenant farmer, and we probably had at least double that. Um, but the, the, the farming came back in hand. I reduced the stocking density, and uh, we, we farm, but we try and farm in, a, in an unintensive way. Uh, we have a bit of let grazing, and we have some, as you can see, any the farmers amongst you will see that uh, we've got some potatoes out there. So some seed potatoes get grown, which is actually good income for the estate. When I got here, we put in a hydroelectric scheme. We've got biomass, which doesn't heat this room, but heats that room and heats the cottages. Um, and that, that's been quite good too. So just some of the things we, we've done on the estate. Uh, grouse shooting we have here primarily walked up and a bit of driven if we have enough. Some stalking, red deer stalking. We have a small pheasant and partridge shoot. Um, we have holiday pro uh, properties, uh, which are really successful with ecotourism coming in. It's something we're trying to build on. Um, and obviously, what we're in today was a cattle court and was falling down, and we've slowly sort of restored it and so on. So we've got an office in a small space next door we use for shoot lunches and events, and then this for a bigger event like weddings and so on. But this is a work in progress. We've only been doing it for a couple of years and we're, we're still finding our way, which most of what I've done is finding my way by tripping over a few things and making a load of mistakes and normally costing me quite a lot of money. So, uh, but eventually we get there, you know, I, I'm, a slow, I'm a bit like Forrest Gump, I get there in the end, you know. Um, so um, motivation, I mean, for me, this is me, this is not everyone, this is my motivation, but profit is a really important motivation for any of you in the public sector if you're in the private sector you just cannot afford to do things unless you make money we're not trying to make so much money and abuse the land or anything like that i mean for me if i can get to break even and make a small profit i'm feeling i've succeeded and i'll plow back anything i make back into the place um, i didn't want to be in intensive farming we're very much unintensive um, we've been trying to improve things like soil quality, um, and I feel you know some of this contour planting we've done is hoping to Im improve grazing. We've hedge planted things like that, which is hoping to improve the grazing and to run a sort of environmentally friendly farming operation. We're not out and out farmers. It's a, it's an upland estate, and a lot of our income comes from other things. So I want to get that out there because I know some of the other guys farming, you know, the ma main source of their income. Um, the grouse and the stalking, the fishing are very much my passion. I enjoy it, and it brings in money. So we try and do it. We let some, and when I keep some for myself. So, um, but it does bring in good money. And what we do is we let. It with the lodge, the main house, so we have parties in, and actually when you have people to stay, obviously you make a lot more money than just people turning up to shoot. So we try and build in packages of holidays where they may come and they do a couple of, a couple of days stalking, a couple of days walked up grouse, and then they stay in the house for a week and blah, 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 and that makes sense financially for us. I'm just trying to give you a bit of my drivers, really, so you understand. Um, I am very, very passionate about wildlife. I am passionate about trees. I'm passionate about improving the river. So for me, this is uh, something I love doing. It's, it's, if I have enough money, every spare bit of cash I have, I will spend to make this happen because I enjoy it. And actually, that's where the grants and the things that are available are really important because half of us can't afford to do it. Um, the other big thing is uh, climate change mitigation. Uh, you know, I feel very strongly that we need to do our bit. I'm not going to glue myself to a, to a bus in London. Um, you know, I think you can do more good by planting trees because trees will suck up carbon and it's much more practical to do something like that. So in my own small way, that's what I'm trying to do. So this year with the contour planting, we planted 120,000 trees. Which some of which you'll see later, but things like that I think make a big impact. Um, I also think that climate change is going to be 
very much on the agenda when they come to looking at the replacement for the single farm payment. And I want us to be in the right position to capitalise on that. Again, it's money coming in. And I think if you can pay money for doing good for everyone, sucking up carbon, whatever, flood mitigation, everyone's benefiting. Paying people to have more cattle or grow more corn, to me, doesn't make any sense if we don't need it. Um, so we should be very much targeting our subsidies, I think, about what we need. Uh, there are some areas where it's absolutely appropriate to grow lots of crops, absolutely, and I, I don't disagree. We need to feed ourselves. But there are areas like this, in my opinion, we'd be much better doing the carbon capture thing. Um, and the other thing that drives us, we have long term, anyone who owns an estate knows, um, I'm looking at Anthony there because he'd be in the same boat, but anyone who owns an estate, we think long term, we think about, we plant trees now that we won't enjoy, but my children and my grandchildren will probably, Colin, I'm nodding his head too, so I'm sure, but we do have a very long term view and you have to have a long term view And this, if you plant an oak tree, you're not going to see it really in your lifetime, but your children will probably enjoy it and your grandchildren will love it, so... Uh, um, so what we've done at Rockle, sorry, that was just a bit of a background because I think it's really nice to picture where it's all coming from. We've re-meandered the Rockle burn. This is all the pictures, by the way, that you're seeing are all on the estate. So this is, you'll see this later, but we've re-meandered the Rockle burn, planted trees and so on. This was very much driven by the fishery board. Um, Marshall and Craig are over there and they, well, Marshall at the time approached me and said, we'd really like to do this. We had a, a canal burn that was like a, a canal. It had been straightened in about 1840 for farming reasons, so it didn't flood the fields. And though it had lovely um, gravel beds in there that fish would, uh, salmon primarily, would um, uh, lay their eggs in and so on, every time it flooded, everything got washed out. So what they said to me is, would you mind if we restored it to the original path? And they had aerial photos. Of course, rivers take many paths, but the main one they, we re reinstated. And they helped me put the, uh, put the funding together for that. And you'll see it later. And it's actually, it was put in five or six years ago. And it's starting to look really good now. Um, the other thing we've done, planted quite a lot of hedges. Uh, when I got here, there was no hedges really at all. So we have really had a big push on hedges. It's something I'd like to do more of, but it's quite expensive. And we have deer and rabbits here, loads of them. So everything has to be double fenced and rabbit fenced and God knows what else. So it's always quite expensive to do. Um, another scheme we've done is this, P it's a pearls in peril it stands for, and it's essentially riparian planting along burn sides. We've done quite a lot. I think it's about 45 acres. Um, this was done in 2014, and basically, um, Marshall and uh, Craig will be able to give you more input on that, but uh, the pearl mussels, the little baby pearl mussels, need clean water, so silt-free water, and they also get in the gills of salmon. And as the salmon migrate up the river, they drop back out, so you can repopulate rivers with salmon. So salmon and pearl mussels go together. I'm interested selfishly in salmon because I like fishing. The pearl mussels, great. So that was a good sort of tie-in where both we, it was a win-win for both of us. Um, and this year, which again you'll see, we've done this big contour planting scheme of about 200 acres, which runs for about three or four miles along the roadside. You probably saw some on your way in, but it goes all the way up the Glen. And the aim, it was based on a scheme in Wales called Pont Bren, and you might have read up on this, but basically the aim is to stop water coming down the hill. It will basically um, soak up water coming off the hill, so it will act as some flood mitigation. It's obviously the, the environmental benefits of having um, native species planted, uh, and it will improve the quality of water coming off the hill, improve the grazing below it, in theory, and also capture carbon. So it's a kind of a win-win thing. The fishery board were very keen uh, to do this for the river, um, and we had various different people drop, dropping in. I had, I'll go on to funding, but we had SRDP and all sorts coming from that. So. Um, these are some more things I've done. I've been, I'm in an EEC scheme. EEC is, to me, if you, do, if, if you want to, if you need to tie EEC into what you're already doing, because if you try and get, follow the money in EEC, you'll end up having to turn yourselves in circles trying to 
comply with all the rules and regulations. So what we did is we looked at what we did and we said, what do we do and what could we, how could we incorporate EECS in how we operate? And we put a scheme together that worked the way we worked. So it, we, you know, we, can, we graze certain fields, you can only graze for a certain amount of time, but that, we said that's fine because they go on the hill and so we could comply with everything. So my advice on if anyone going into EECS is make sure, look at what you do now and then try and tie it in with what you're doing now. Um, we, dig, we dug some re wade escapes, scrapes and stuff like that, and that was, that's important. We have a huge wader population here, which is great, and it's something I'm nervous about because everywhere else it seems to be crashing, so I'm really trying to work hard to make sure ours is sustained. Um, we've just gone into a peatland restoration project, but we're not doing that till January. I was hoping to, I was hoping to have that done. Um, and there's some birch natural regen, which I'll show you later. And there's ongoing work with the fishery board to improve the river. So that's just some of the things we're working on. Um, funding opportunities. I know I haven't got much time, but these are the things we use. SRDP, local fishery board were very good. If you're in an area, start with the fishery board. Say, look, I want to do some planting. Will it help the, fish will it help the river system? And they're, they're actually very keen to help normally. SEPA did a lot. They have something called the Water Environment Fund, and they... they nearly fully funded the, um, the, the restoration of the Rottle Burn. Local council here, it's Angus, they, did some, they helped us with some contour planting, some experimental stuff. And Forest Carbon are worth talking to. I've future sold some of the carbon we're going to capture, which helped meet the funding gap in the final part of the tree planting. And the Woodland Trust, and they came in where other people can't, they can, they can gap fund a bit too. So all of those, and there are probably others which I haven't mentioned, but they're all um, worth talking to. This is just a map. These are all, this is from the RSPB. This is all our wader nests in, just in the low ground. You can see we've got lots of them. I'm just showing this because I got the report in the other day, and I'm really proud of that. Now, it's something I want to keep working on. But um, So wildlife-wise, the benefits of everything I've done manifest itself in the wildlife. We have got a really nice, large, stable wader population We've got an increasing black grouse population. There's approximately 100 males on five leks. I'm estimating 200 because you normally have an equal number of males and females. Um, so it's pretty unscientific. Uh, 102 bird species. We have someone ringing birds, and they gave me a list of all the species that they've found up here, which is good. Large mountain hare population and uh, nesting um, Merlins, peregrines, and juvenile eagles trying to nest. They built a nest, but they haven't laid any eggs in it yet. But hopefully that will come. Um, so, yeah, generally that's to me, was, is the payoff of all this work we've done. Um, it's not everyone's agenda, I know, but it's mine. So um, that's about it. These are some lapwings I photographed about three weeks ago, just leaving the glen, or four weeks ago probably. But uh, you can see my photography skills aren't brilliant, but you, got, you get the picture. Anyway, um, that was it. So do I take any questions or shall I wait to the end? Okay, perfect. Thank you.